Two months later, three months later, I walk by. That is it, that, that dress right there. That's it, I want that one. That's the one I want. I could be like 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I would say the same. That dress. You know, when I'm 18, I'll walk past that. That, 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 seriously. Seriously, that is the one. That is the one I want. Like, no, 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 no. I might need to walk in there and ask them, like, will they hold that for me? You know, when I do eventually get married. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Cindy and in this video I'm going to be sharing tips on whether or not you should buy a wedding dress. I think everyone can agree they are very very pricey. I didn't realize how pricey they were until I was researching. First thing that I would do if you are someone who's just got engaged and thinking about a wedding dress is have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with yourself of whether or not you even need a wedding dress. I recently bought my dress, but there are several things that I honestly think that not everyone needs one. And I don't think that would make a huge impact in your wedding. So for example, if you are the type of person who do not like dresses, if you are a type of person who does not care about clothing, if you're the type of person who do not care about the quality of the clothing, these are all things to consider because if you're going to go and buy a wedding dress from a boutique, they could run between a couple of hundred pounds to several thousand pounds. And that could be very, very expensive, especially if it's not gonna give you as much joy as let's say, I don't know, the venues, the decorations, the food, the cake, guest, the DJ, music. There's so many places for you to splash and splurge that I would argue not everyone needs a wedding dress. But I definitely think it's a heart-to-heart -heart conversation that you need to have with yourself. The next thing is, if you find yourself in that category where you don't really care about wedding dresses, what I would do is go to a wed-to-be consignment store. Just a store that you could just walk in and try on actual proper wedding dresses. And the reason I say it's proper is because they're still from the designer. The designer has designed it and it's been made there. When you go there and try them on, you might change your mind. It might be the fact that you didn't know that you appreciate things like that. After that, you still couldn't care less about the dress. Yeah, at that point, I would suggest think about what you want. I definitely would say you either buy something that you've always wanted to wear. So that could be a red ball gown dress, that could be a black dress, that could be like a black suit. Something that you've always wanted to wear in your life. Either get a good version, a really nice version of that, so that later you might be able to wear it in the future if you want, or just buy something simple. Just because the price difference is so big that I honestly think if you are not into it, don't splurge that money. Splurge it somewhere else that you really care. I love dresses, so I did end up splurging. Like, I love dresses to the point I bought AliExpress dresses and I bought a boutique dress. Like I bought, and I'm still looking at dresses, I still want dresses. I get that when you buy the one, it is the one, don't get me wrong, the boutique one is the one, but I have such wondering eyes that I want every dresses. So yeah, that's, <laughs> if, you're, if you don't feel like that, you know that you, you're good, you're good. So now you know what kind of things you're gonna buy. You're either gonna get it from AliExpress, the cheaper version, or you're gonna go to the boutique version. Like at that point, you we pretty much got to a point where we're splitting, okay? You're either the person who cares about dresses, you're going to the boutique. You don't care about any of that. You're gonna go to the cheaper version. None of them are better than the other, by the way. It's just where you choose to splurge your money. That's all it is. The next thing for both groups, I would say, is research. Research the type of dresses you like, the type of dresses that you think would suit you. There is one thing that the dress looks good on a model, it does not necessarily mean that it's gonna look good on you. I have fell for that so many times. The amount of time I've seen a dress on a model, I remember telling my partner, I'm gonna get that dress, whether you like it or not, without even trying it on. And then one day I saw it on a different person, not a model, and I've lost interest. I hate to say I've lost interest. It looks gorgeous on her, but it just, it's not, it's not the same. It just doesn't have the same feeling. So I 1000% think about what suits you and what makes you happy. Once you know what kind of style you want, what kind of things would, that you think, you think would suit you, don't set it in stone. The reason I'm saying that, again, I set mine in stone and I came home with something completely different. The next step I would say is Again, 
where to be. Just go to stores that you do not need to pay any money, any appointments at all. Because the reason I'm saying this is that if you go for a boutique, they charge about 20 to 30 pounds. Especially on the early stage, you wanna make sure that if you're paying 30 pounds, that is the time when you know you there's something you want in there. If you don't know whether there's something you want in there, don't even bother, don't spend that 30 pound. Go to a where to be, go to any consignment store that you do not need to pay to go in and try on different style of dresses. Find the ones that are that you had in mind, put them on for something similar and see how you feel. Once you got that confirmed, this is where both group will go into different places. So the person who doesn't really care about the dresses, you are going to look at AliExpress, you're gonna to go to and look at ASOS, you might even have a look at Zara. You are probably going to buy your dress online. Try it on, and if you don't like it, return it. That's probably going to be the process for you. Now, when you're buying things online, always ask for their original photos. Analyze them. Analyze the crap out of them. Oh, actually, if you don't care that much, actually, it might actually be okay. I love dresses, so that's why I analyze every inch of them. But if you don't, that's the sort of thing. But have a look. If it looks good to you, ask all the questions you need. A lot of them do custom made anyway. So if you send them your measurements, they'll measure it to your size, ship it to you, and then you can try them on if you're happy and it fits, or if it might need some extra tailoring, go and get it tailored. It will still work out so much cheaper than the original proper boutique dress. So that is what I will do if I am not a huge dress lover, if I've never really cared about dresses and I don't really care about the quality of any clothing. Like if you have no interest in fashion, this is probably the best way forward. Now on to the people who love dresses, clothing, care about the quality and all of that stuff. The next thing you want to think about is your budget. If your budget isn't very big, I strongly recommend doing some research on brands that is within your budget range and be open-minded for sample sales. For sample sales, they are not going to be perfect. The ones that I've seen, they had dirt on them. I mean, by all means, they've all been worn by other people. Just keep that in mind. What you buy is what you get. And it's still not a small amount. The one of the dresses that I saw in the sample that I didn't really care, but it was just the best out of the four that I tried. That was two thousand and eighty pounds. It was a very, it's a very average wedding dress to me, but it was still over two grand for a. It's dirty, is what I'm trying to say. The the gown was dirty and they still wanted over two grand for it. So the next thing to think about is once you know your budget and you also know roughly what brand falls into that price bracket or you're gonna be open-minded into like sample dresses, then start looking into um, boutiques. Which boutique stores which brands? because every brand has their own style. When I was growing up, I lived about five, six minutes away from a bridal boutique. And I swore one day when I'm gonna get a dress, I'm gonna go into that boutique and buy my wedding dress there. Because every single time I walk past, I was like, that's it. That's my wedding dress right there. Two months later, three months later, I walk by. That's it, that, that dress right there. That's it, I want that one. That's the one I want. I could be like 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I would say the same. That dress, you know, when I'm 18, I'll walk past that, 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 seriously. Seriously, that is the one. That is the one I want. Like, no, 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 no. I might need to walk in there and ask them, like, will they hold that for me? You know, when I do eventually get married. <laughs> but guess what? When I was actually engaged, for the first time, looked on their website and my taste changed. Nothing was grabbing me on the site. On the boutique, it show, they show you the different style of dresses that they have. And if none of them is grabbing you, why would you go and book an appointment with them? Do your research on your boutique. If you're going through a boutique and you see a couple of dresses that you really, really love, then at that point, I would say, go and book an appointment because the probability of you leaving that boutique with a dress is much higher than if you just blindly go there. The next thing I'm gonna say is a bit of a hard one, but this is purely just the fact that I've learned my lesson on it. If you heard my first story, first went to a bridal boutique, my experience was really bad. And part of the reason was because most of their stuff was out of my price range. My budget at the time was 2000. Their average was about five grand. But the reason I went there was because I was so certain that I was gonna buy a dress there that was on sale for 500 pounds. When I tried that dress on, it looked so, so bad on me. I couldn't look more out of place. The problem that I was in at that point was 
I was in a store that was way out of my budget. The person who was serving me could not, I mean, there was other things with her, but anyway, she couldn't really go and pick out stuff for me because if my budget was two grand and most of their stuff was about 5k it's gonna be a bit hard so that is definitely a lesson I've learned granted as well not every single person there you're gonna mesh with for example despite everything I still feel that it could have been a great experience if she actually cared for example when I was trying my dress on if she wasn't staring at her nails, it would be a much more helpful appointment. I wouldn't mind if she just told me straight up that most of our gowns here are about 5K. You have two choices, either try them on and find what style you want or stretch your budget. I'm fine if we just had that conversation, but instead I had her playing with her nails the whole time. And bear in mind that when you're paying for an appointment as well, it's very, very different to a free appointment. Like I need to get that out there. When it's a free appointment, your expectation is on the floor. Like that, that is, that's fine. At that point, if I'm not paying for the appointment, yeah, do your nails, do your toast, do whatever you want. But if I'm paying for the appointment, that time in the nicest way possible is mine. You're there to help me. Whether that is help me to find the dress that I love, find the dress that's within my budget, or find the dress that suits me. Like that should be part of the whole deal that was a slight run but anyway i definitely think that is something that when you're paying for a boutique or paying for an appointment that is the expectation that you need to have when you're going into it don't go to a store that is way out of your budget if you do accidentally go into a store that's a bit out of your budget or way out of your budget hopefully the person who's there to help you will find a way to make the appointment more useful to you another thing to think about is with your budget that also needs to somewhat include your alterations for me personally i didn't include my alterations and I don't know how much my alterations will be. The reason I'm saying that you have to consider alterations is because when you're already spending several grand on a dress, you're not gonna go to a dingy alteration shop and hope the best. You are going to take it to a proper tailor's and get it tailored no matter how much it costs. That's where I'm getting at. You already spent the money, you're in too deep, you're not exactly gonna try and save when it comes to tailoring. On the other hand, if you don't really care about the dress and you got the dress from AliExpress, by all means, go and tailor it yourself. If you're that brave, go for it. Like I, the dresses that I got from AliExpress, I've already ordered a sewing kit from Amazon. Like I've already decided that I'm gonna try and make it work. But the dress I bought from the boutique, I'm not touching that. Like the only time I'm wearing that is when I'm putting it on. I am not gonna be touching that with anything sharp, any needle, no, nothing. Like the professionals will be doing that. AliExpress ones, I'll give it a go. Do you get what I mean? There's one that's like, you know, two grand and the other one that's 200. That is the next thing. Yeah, definitely think about the alterations. Keep that in mind when you're buying a dress. If your budget for a dress is 5K, just take, I would just take a grand out for alterations. And another thing is when they say it is made to order, it's made to order, not made to you. They measure the largest part of you and buy it in that size, which means the rest of you who are not that big on your body, they're going to have to take it in in the tailoring section, which means it's going to be an extra cost on top of everything. Now granted some places, some designers, they might do an order to your body, which means they will measure you throughout and the dress will be made to you which at that point you don't really need to put that much budget into tailoring but I would still say leave a couple of hundred here and there you might need some tweaks who knows so that is pretty much all my tips I hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you agree with it disagree with it personally for me this particular way worked quite well for me so I don't regret buying from AliExpress and I don't regret buying from the boutique but that is just me. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. I would love to see you soon. And that being said, I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you next week. Bye.